Sportonomics has a special guest today, Grantland.com, lead baseball writer and author of Up, Up and Away, the story of the Montreal Expos. Montreal native Jonah Carey's here with us. You talk about sports teams returning to Quebec. Business-wise, uh, does the same environment exist for baseball in Montreal? It's still not likely there are these external factors that have to happen, but there's this much of a chance. You need the local factors, which is Bell or whoever, some billionaire, and then you also need MLB to sign off. So that has to be either expansion, not likely, why would you split up $9 billion two more ways, or relocation, not likely, because there's no team that's really, really struggling that badly. So again, possible but a long shot. Is Montreal the type of TV market that could generate these long-term TV deals like we're seeing in, in, in Philly in uh, Los Angeles? I don't think so, uh, but it takes all kinds. You know, to me, you look at it and you say, well, there's always going to be a number one and there's always going to be a number 30. If you want a new market, then it has to be, are you better than number 30? If Montreal came in and was number 19, then that would be an improvement over Tampa Bay or whatever, and so that would be the goal. But wouldn't um, you know return of baseball to Montreal? One of the things that the Blue Jays in, enjoy, you yeah. know, and there's always a speculation about how much money they're making off of TV, you know, and they're kind of seen as a pretty big market team because Toronto has what five million people. Yeah. You know, the Blue Jays TV market is an entire country. Now, how yeah. open would they be to suddenly having to share this monopoly that they have? I don't view it as a problem, and if anything, if they were to play in the same division, for instance that would be something. The TV ratings would go way up. On balance, it would probably be pretty even and it wouldn't be a big problem. And in terms of the intangible, it would probably be pretty cool, actually. I miss watching the games on, uh, on Channel 12 in Toronto, mm -hmm. CBFLT or whatever it is, and hearing the announcers say uh, the name Chris Widger, <laughs> the Quebec accent, and uh, Mark Grudzelanik en Francais. I love that. What do you miss most? But to me, it was a, a personal kind of connection. It was being there with my family, and especially later on being there with my idiot friends in high school, I will tell you flat out that we threw strawberries at Daryl Strawberry. That's how, we were horrible, horrible, horrible people. But, uh, you know, and cheering and chanting and whatever. We had signs, we used to make signs. Uh, we'd ditch high school, or we'd go to high school art class, but we'd not do what everybody else was doing. We'd make these big signs. One of them was Delino De Shields, was a really good prospect coming up. We wrote Delino De Shields, the rookie of the year, and we took it to the ballpark with us. And so stuff like that we used to do. We, we were very stupid. Wait a minute. Individual players and individual contracts, yeah. uh, you know, when I look at these, I see a series of teams getting ripped off because the guy, to me, isn't going to be a $24 million a year player when he's 40. Right. So why aren't more teams just saying, hey, look, why don't we just pay you $40 million a year for four years and call it a day? Here's the thing that I would say about baseball teams. You're on the right track with the $40 million because I don't look at Cano as being a $24 million player right now. He is a $40 million player. He's worth about that much. You basically are accepting the downside on the back end for a profit on the front end. And I think if you look at it like that, it's fine. However, you still need to evaluate the player. So you can't just say, snap my fingers, he's 40 million, that's fine. How long can he maintain? If he's 40 here, how long can he go to 38, 35, 30? How long can he keep this going? Pujols is in trouble now. He's two years in. That's a big problem. That was a miscalculation on the part of the Angels. We'll see what happens with Cano. There is definitely some downside, though. Your first book, yes. The Extra 2%. Details how the Tampa Bay Rays use all these Wall Street principles uh, to build a winner with not a lot of money. When you look at the landscape of Major League Baseball right now, and over the next two or three or four seasons, which teams uh, are best positioned to do something similar using Wall Street principles? So Pittsburgh is definitely one. You know, Kansas City had, is coming up. I don't know if you could say they're very innovative. Cleveland is quite innovative, and they made the playoffs for the first time in a while last year, too. So we'll see what happens, and the Cubs could be one, too. Maybe someday the Cubs will finally figure this stuff out because it's been a century since they've won a World Series. It's been a century since the Cubs have won a World Series, but it's been like two weeks since Jonah Carey uh, published his latest book, Up, Up, and Away, Story of the Montreal Expos. He's been kind enough to give us some of his time. Jonah, thanks for coming out. Thank you, Morgan. For Sportonomics, he's Jonah Carey. I'm Morgan Campbell.